Last time we looked at some of the energy expressions you get for hartree fock theory applied to atoms, and now we're going to look deeper into some of the operators that you get in hartree fock theory. So we have first our one electron operators, this hi in orbital i for electron one, and this is just the kinetic energy of that electron and its attraction to the nucleus. Um, the Laplacian operator being second derivative with respect to all three spatial dimensions, and z being the number of protons in the nucleus, and r being the, ri being the distance away from the nucleus. Uh, again, all of these are in atomic units uh, in this video. And we have a Coulomb operator, which Coulomb operator ji acting on orbital psi j is going to give us psi j times the integral of electron 2, the second electron it's interacting with through uh, this Coulomb operator. And that's the integral of electron 2's electron density, it's psi star i times psi i, and then times the Coulomb operator 1 over r12. And that gives us a value of how much electron 1 is repelled by electron 2 at all points in space, how much it's repelled by the mean field of electron 2. So our treatment of this 1 over r12 operator is a mean field approximation. It's how does the electron how do the electrons feel each other on average. And additionally we see we have the uh, exchange operator which is like a Coulomb integral but or like a Coulomb operator but instead of uh, having it act on psi j and give us just a, a function of position back it actually switches orbital i, orbital j to orbital i, and inside the integral here we switch one, this uh, psi i to psi j. So I've underlined the things here where we perform the exchange, which is why I didn't write just this operator by itself. Um, the exchange operator doesn't make any sense unless you have a, a uh, orbital for it to act on because it exchanges the indices inside that orbital there. So this top electron here, this top operator here only depends on one electron, thus you see only the coordinates of R1, position of electron one. But these two operators down here, Coulomb and exchange, they are the interaction of two electrons, so you see two indices, R1 and R2, and thus those are called two electron operators. So for each of these operators, you can have expectation values, which lead to some form of energy. You have the one electron energy, you have uh, integral over electron coordinates of psi star i, the one electron operator acting on psi i, so that's for a given orbital i, that orbital has some kinetic energy and attraction to the nucleus. For uh, two given orbitals, they have a Coulomb integral, j i j, orbital i and orbital j, and that's just electron density of electron 1, psi star psi, electron density of electron 2, uh, psi star psi in orbital j, and they're interacting through the Coulomb operator. Then we had our exchange integral, which uh, wasn't so easy to interpret classically, where we have an exchange uh, within the real orbitals, not the complex conjugate orbitals, but the orbitals themselves, where you exchange this i and j, and that uh, j and that i, for this exchange integral here, which ar arises from uh, that exchange operator. Okay, so uh, obviously this is an approximation using these Coulomb and exchange integrals. It's an approximation to how we treat electron-electron repulsion. So these orbitals that we get, these Hartree-Fock orbitals, are not eigenfunctions of the full Hamiltonian. The full Hamiltonian being all of the kinetic energy terms, all of the potential energy terms attracting to the nucleus, all of the potential energy terms of the electrons repelling each other. They are not eigenfunctions of that a full Hamiltonian of that system, and they are, and the energies are not eigenvalues of that uh, Hamiltonian as well. So what what operator are they eigenvalues of? So these orbitals are actually eigenvalues of the Fock operator, and that's the Fock as in hartree fock the second part of it. And we can define the Fock operator for electron one in the following way. It's going to have its one electron operator, so it's going to have its uh, kinetic energy and its attraction to the nucleus, and then we're going to add to that a sum over its interactions 
with all of the other electrons. Let me call this I. All the other electrons from 1 to n of electron I. And that's going to be interacting through a Coulomb operator, J. Well, we'll just call it Ji for R1 minus an exchange operator, Ki for R1. Okay, and this was what we would have described uh, previously in terms of the helium atom is kind of our effective potential. This is our mean field, which, it, which is acting on electron one. Our electron one is interacting with all of the other electrons through this mean field, which is th created through a sum of all of the Coulomb and exchange operators. Okay, so once we have this mean field, then we have the following eigenvalue equation. We have that the Fock operator acting on orbital i, psi i, is going to give us the orbital energy, epsilon i, times that psi i back again with r1. And this is going to be true for however many electrons we have. We have electron 1, 2, all the way up to electron n. So the Fock, there's going to be a Fock operator for uh, every different orbital. Every different orbital is going to have a different one electron operator. And then it's going to have the same sum of uh, Coulomb and exchange operators acting on it. And each individual orbital is going to have its own kind of pseudo eigenvalue equation here with the Fock operator acting on it to give the orbital energy, the energy eigenvalue uh, back times this wave function here. Okay, our orbital energies are then going to be defined through an integral where we have the integral over electron one of psi star i r1 times the Fock operator for electron one acting on that orbital. So this is a standard expectation value equation. We have a complex conjugate of wave function times operator acting on wave function integrated over the entire domain of the wave function gives an expectation value. And this Fock operator is our kind of effective Hamiltonian for this one particle equation here, this one electron equation. So we have this orbital energy and then this orbital energy, if you compare this equation down to this operator here and all these integrals and the expressions from the previous video, what you'll end up having is that the orbital energies are going to be the one electron energy for that orbital, its kinetic energy and attraction to the nucleus, plus a sum from j equals 1 to n of the Coulomb integral j i j so it's interact it's coulomb interaction with uh, with uh, the electrons in orbital j minus the exchange integral the exchange interaction with any electrons in orbital j going all the way from orbital 1 up to orbital n all of the occupied orbitals which are filled with electrons for our total of n electrons there okay so that's what our orbital energies are if we then add up the sum of all of our orbital energies, so if we have sum of i equals 1 to n of all of our orbital energies, what we're going to have then is a sum of all the one electron energies, so a sum of all the kinetic energies and all the attractions to the nucleus for every individual electron. Then we have a sum from i equals 1 to n and decide sum from j equals 1 to n of Coulomb integral minus exchange integral of the, all of the two electron energy. So we have all of the one electron energy here from the one electron operators in all of the orbitals and we have all of our two electron energy from our Coulomb and exchange energy uh, going down here. And how does this compare to our expression for the total Hartree-Fock energy for an atom? Well the total Hartree-Fock energy for an atom is going to be a sum of all of these one electron energies. Okay, so far so good. That matches up there. But there's a problem 
when we look at the sum of these orbital energies here. Um, this double sum here is going to count the interaction of electron I and electron J twice. So um, the sum of orbital energies actually double counts our two electron energy. It double counts the interaction between all of the electrons. So to make this an equivalent expression to what we had in the previous video, we can do the following. We can divide this by half. And we can have sum from I equals 1 uh, to N, sum from J equals 1 to N of JIJ. It's KIJ. Okay, so our, if we cut our uh, orbital energies and their two electron energy in half, then we get what is equivalent to the total hartree fock energy here. So very important to keep in mind that the, the hartree fock energy for an atom is not equal to a sum of the orbital energies because that would double count the two electron energy there.